yourself who you really are. Hello everybody, welcome back to Screen Stars. I'm here today to bring you my review for the 2016 action sequel, Jason Bourne. The film is co-written and directed by Paul Greengrass. And we once again have Matt Damon returning as Jason Bourne, as well as Tommy Lee Jones, uh, Alicia Vikander, Vincent Cassell, uh, Julia Stiles and Reese Ahmed. Now then, this time uh, we've got Jason Bourne returning to action after a bit of a hiatus. Uh, the last one was 2007 Ultimatum. Um, I remember being really quite excited for this when this one um, was due to come out because I'm a big, big fan of this franchise. Um, and I remember going to see this and having a bit of a tinge of disappointment. And I've only I'd only seen this once before rewatching it for this review. Um, and this time around, okay, we've got Jason Bourne returning to action. Um, he is kind of drawn back in by Julia Stiles' character, Nikki, who believes she's got more information for Jason, even though he feels like he remembers enough. She basically says to him, I've got other stuff that you need to know about your father, etc., etc. So he's drawn back in, um, and then he's immediately targeted by the uh, higher-ups. And the higher-ups in this film is Tommy Lee Jones' character, who is the CIA director, and we've got Alicia Vikander, who plays Heather Lee, like a top analyst. So they're the guys in the uh, in the control room, controlling everything, chasing Jason Bourne down and the others. And the main asset in this film is played by Vincent Cassell who um, has got a real issue with Jason Bourne uh, for a number of reasons, one of them being when Jason Bourne exposed Treadstone and uh, the other one, when the name's, the name escapes me, um, it kind of put him at risk, and he was kind of, I think, imprisoned for a couple of years. Um, so he's got a real problem with Jason Bourne, but as we learn in this film, Jason Bourne has got a even bigger problem with him because he's the guy that, spoilers, killed Jason Bourne's father. And we learn in this film that Jason Bourne's father was the one who essentially created Treadstone and he wanted to kind of burn it all down when they realized, when he realized that they were trying to recruit his son, uh, which ended up with him being killed. So Jason Bourne's trying to expose all this now, expose this new uh, threat that is being um, created by Tommy Lee Jones' character as he's trying to kind of blackmail a top tech giant uh, played by Reese Ahmed to kind of give the CIA a backdoor access to this new program they're setting up. Um, right, so is this film, let's be honest now, is this film up to the same standards as the first three films? Well, the quick and simple answer is no. Um, is it a disaster? Of course it isn't. I mean, it's a really well-made film. Um, it feels like it's certainly got the DNA of the first three films, especially, you know, the last one, Ultimatum. Um, but at, at the same time, it can't really be denied that it feels like it's just treading on familiar ground at this point. Um, now, at the end of Ultimatum, it, it felt like it tied off those trilogy of films perfect. You know what I mean? He learned about his past. Um, he went home, he kind of put all that to bed um, and then wanted to kind of move on with his life. So uh, this film, the way it kind of brought him back in and then he created this new angle about his father that, you know, in all seriousness, should really have come out in Ultimatum. Um, but no, they've got to think of a new way to kind of draw him back in and so they include his father in this one. Um, it, it, almost, it feels like the story, if you like, is... <laughs> Um, it, it's kind. It feels like a, it's been written to kind of um, just fit all these pieces in, sort of thing. It does, and it, it and it feels like it's these pieces have been thrown into a scenario where in where we've seen Jason Bourne do all these things before. Um, so while it's nice to see Jason Bourne doing a lot of these things that he's done in the past, um, it's also at the same time it no longer feels original or um, edgy or anything like that. It, it it kind of is feeling a bit dated, I suppose, is the best way to put it in this film. And the first three films didn't, you couldn't, 
you couldn't point your finger at any of the first three films and say they felt dated. Every single one of them felt fresh and original and um, edgy and, you know, gritty and grounded. And, and this one didn't. It, it, it just... I don't know. I, I think they'd almost like threw a bit too much polish at this one to a large degree. And the whole concept of you know the big bad bad big bad guy is the always like the CIA operative you know like the Tommy Lee Jones character like the Brian Cox in the in the uh, first two films and uh, David Strathairn in the Ultimatum and you know it 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 always feels like it's the same villain kind of churned out again and again in a different suit um so it just didn't feel like it was kind of given us anything new here and they brought back julia styles's character but give a very very and i mean very little to do here and the only character i thought had any real potential here was alicia vikander's character heather lee this cia analyst um I, and I, I was always waiting for the twist with her character who is she? What's she doing? What's her ultimate? What's her? What's her ultimate motives here? And they turn out to be her own selfish ones, and I, I thought that was disappointing. I would have loved, um, if I'm honest, I would have loved to have seen, um, you know, Pamela Landy returning in this one. I think she was a great character from the um, second and the third film, and I thought it would have been interesting, maybe to bring her back and for her to be kind of sacrificed that i think that probably would have maybe have been a better way you know for jason bond to come back someone who genuinely had his back in those movies and if he kind of came back uh, because she'd kind of been set up and framed and a uh, good name ruined for me that would be a better way to get jason bond back than cooking up this you know this story angle with his dad that you know, it felt like it, they, they tied up all the family stuff in the third one for me. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the action is completely, it's absolutely on point here. Um, I liked all the action sequences. Again, the driving sequences are absolutely on point here. They work really, really well. Um, you, you get some great hand-to-hand -hand stuff, as you expect, obviously, with the Bond films. Um, and you get thankfully a satisfying um conclusion to the confrontation between jason bourne and the asset you know the one that's really got a problem with jason bourne so you get a, a, a good conclusion to that um you get this weird rambo 3 beginning to jason bourne where he's kind of doing this underground fighting for me uh, that didn't fit the character of jason bourne i didn't believe he would do something like that you know, it, surely it would bring too many eyes on him because people would be filming these fights and it'd go all over social media or um, and he would kind of be exposed and he's he was such an expert of kind of hiding under the radar. You know, why, why would he do the self-gratification of fighting? I'm sure he was clever enough and smart enough to make money in other ways. Um, so... There's some some of the writing here didn't necessarily fit the character either, but it is still a solid action outing, um, a solid entry into the franchise. It kind of sits adjacent to the first three. Um, it doesn't necessarily, you know, slot in nicely next to them, but it, it's certainly worth checking out. I mean, there are rumours that he's considering doing another one. Um, I, 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 I'm not going to lie; I would be interested in that. Um, uh, but that he's already on record as saying that he found this one very, very difficult to play Jason Bourne in his 40s. Well, he's in his 50s now, so he's going to find it even more difficult. Um, but I would be interested, but I think they would have to kind of reinvent the format a little bit, I think, for Jason Bourne. If he, if he just comes back and it's the same old format, you know, people in a room chasing him down and we've got a corrupt CIA operative and... It, there's no point in doing it in my opinion i think we need something really really fresh and new but yeah um let me know what your thoughts are on this jason bourne film i will be reviewing the jeremy renner one uh the bourne legacy is it something like that and i'm also i'm going to be watching and reviewing the original 1988 TV movie, The Born Identity, with Richard Chamberlain. Um, I've got a copy of that to watch, so I'm quite looking forward to checking that out, and I'll bring you my review for that one as well, guys. So stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching.